again, Pastor Jonathan is gone this, this week on vacation. He'll be back with us next week. And as we, we looked at this Sunday, we knew that it would be a fuller Sunday. We knew that the Bible college would be here. We knew that the Hungarians would be here. Um, and so Pastor just asked, could you, you he just, he's like, can you do at least just a short devotional? I said, absolutely. And as we think about the count, this is before I knew I was leaving. And as we get down to the countdown, I have three Sundays left with you in official capacity uh, as, as the youth director of this congregation, worship congregational director, the long, obnoxious title. Um, and, and so I want to, two of the last three Sundays, to get to bring the word of God to you. So this week, I want to I kind of take a, a two-parter on talking about God's faithfulness. And so I want to share a little bit uh, in this one, a little more of the testimony of how God has led me to uh, away from this congregation in an official role. Uh, as you know, though, my, our family, we're not moving. We're still staying in the same house. We plan to attend here. Um, the elders asked, and I said, yes, I will continue to be an elder here at the church uh, and help out. And I'll also be leading a parent form learning community as well. That will take a little break from that. We'll come back to that. And then also helping with one small technical issue. When I saw the Lord... The number three came to my mind. Like, there's three things I'm willing to do as a member, as the congregation, because we're still members here. So those are the three things that will be uh, continuing to help out here at the, at the church. But I want to share a little bit about uh, how God has led us away uh, in this capacity. And I want to talk about his faithfulness in doing that. I want to share about how he has been so faithful to us all and some of the principles and things that we can learn about God that, that can apply to all of us this morning. I want to read for you from Ephesians chapter 3. The words are on the screen there. I will read this aloud. You can follow along either on the screen or if you have a Bible you want to follow along there, you can turn there in the book of Ephesians chapter 3. It says this, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of His glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than we ask or think. According to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Jesus, you are faithful. In spite of us being faithless, and I pray this morning, Lord, that you would remind all of us that your faithfulness is enough, that your grace is sufficient for all. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. The first thing I want to talk about is how God calls us to faithfulness. That's what he calls us to. There's nothing else. It is only to faithfulness. Now, this process, has, it started, you could trace it back as early as last November, this process of where we are today. And at, at the end of November, one of my close friends, he let me know that he said he was going to be stepping down from his position to take a different role. And so in early December, mid-December, it was made public that Jason Holt would step down as National Youth Director from the AFLC. And... And at that point, a lot of people, I had a, a number of phone calls in the month of December from friends and people that um, I've come to know well. And they said, I want you to know that I'm going to be recommending you to take this position. I want you to take this position. And the AFLC Youth Ministries Ministry Board, they did this uh, open thing where you could nominate people to be taking this role. And my name was uh, coming in quite often, frequently, as a recommendation to take this job. Now, as my wife and I, we've gone through, we've been here for 19 plus years now, we knew that we didn't want to necessarily move laterally to a different church uh, and just do the same thing over again. We knew that if God were to call us away, it'd be a different step, a, another direction, another uh, ministry opportunity in that way. 
So in, from November, I had in the back of my mind that this was going to be a real possibility that this could happen. This is actually legitimate. And there had been many inquiries. In fact, I had just said no to a church I'd interviewed in in October, uh, just a couple months before that. I said, no, I'm not interested. You know, God has not called me uh, to, to this church. And at any time in the last five years, I would say, uh, it's averaged between two and three inquiries per year that I get. And 90% of the time, I'm, it's easy, just no, nope, you know, God has called me to on Alaska, to Christ is Lord, and until he calls me different, and call, until he calls me somewhere different, I'm going to be there. And so that was always my answer. And even this congregation in October, that's the same thing I told them. I said, listen, uh, they asked me, what's the first, I said, it's probably less than 5% chance that I'm going to say yes. And they said, you know what, that's fine. Come on over anyway. You have a you know, free trip on us. We'd love to get to know you and just be able to, to learn and things like that. So God called me to on Alaska. That's where I've been. And so this national youth director position comes up and I'm thinking, okay, this is a real possibility. So much, in fact, that in December, Pastor Jonathan, when he got back from Africa, we hadn't even had a chance to talk. We hadn't had a chance to visit with each other. He told the elders this. He said, listen, we have to be prepared to lose Daniel in the next few months. Because even Jonathan knew, like, this Nash Youth Director position is a very real possibility. We need to be prepared. We need to start getting ready for this possibility. As time goes on through January and February and March, and finally we get to March, and we have an a, a, a official interview of, of process, and we go through different things and many conversations, many things going on in between December and March. And then in April, we find out that that is not what the Lord wants. He does not want me to have this role. And when we found that out, it was just a, it was a weird, strange day. Here, the, here we thought God was leading me to take this position. God had been pre prepping and preparing that and going, okay, here are the things that we're going to do. Pastor Jonathan's already going, yeah, elders, we need to start thinking about this because if and when, I mean, even Pastor Jonathan said, when he leaves, we need to be ready to go. And so the job comes and it's not going to happen. It was disappointing. And in the midst of that, I was reminded as discouraged as I was, I was reminded that God gently, quietly said to me, Daniel, what is the thing that you say all the time to the churches that you've talked to? Until I call you away, I'm going to be at Christ as Lord. Daniel, I have not called you to any task. I have not called you to a specific city or church. Because I've called, it, it doesn't matter where you serve, because I've called you to be faithful to me. That's what I want. And so as God gently reminds me that his call is to faithfulness, it, it kind of eases things. It kind of takes the pressure and the stress off. And maybe you're in a situation where you are under some pressure, you're under something that's a little bit discouraging, something that isn't going so well, something that is causing a little bit of strife in your life, and you're not sure what to do. You're not sure what practice you're supposed to, you're not sure who to talk to, what book you're supposed to read, and you, you, you're searching and searching, trying to figure this out. And God says this, he says, you know what? I have called you to faithfulness. I have called you to be in my presence and I want you to cease striving and let me be God. God's call in my life, even though the National Youth Director position did not happen, it did not change because his call was greater than a position. His call is greater than a city. His call is greater than even a specific ministry. His call is about his faithfulness. His call is to us, to you, to me, to be faithful. Life may not go the way you hope, the way that you plan, the way that you dream, the things that you want to do. And that's discouraging. That gets it's hard to go through those things. But God's call is not that. God's call is to faithfulness. And when you can focus on his faithfulness, when you can focus on Jesus and that call, all the other things doesn't matter anymore. 
when I was reminded that God had called me to be faithful wherever I am, and until he changes that call, I will be faithful, he took care of the rest. And it did, no longer did it matter that the national youth director position was no longer a thing. It no longer mattered all those things and all the things that you go through, all the strife, the trouble, all those things don't matter when you are reminded and you put your trust and faith and belief that God has called you to be faithful to his faithfulness. That is where God calls you. But how do we remain faithful? How do we do that? How do we stay faithful? How do we hear God's call to faithfulness and then live in that faithfulness? What do we do? How can we remain faithful? Well, we have to remember this. It is God who pours his faithfulness to us. So he calls us to himself. And when he calls us to himself, he says, hey, I'm the Lord. And guess what? I am going to take care of it for you. Paul said in verse 14 in our text, I bow my knees before the Father. I come before him and I acknowledge God. I say, God, you are my dad. You are my father. You are my savior. You are my Lord. This is who you are. And when you have a proper understanding of that relationship, when you know that God is your, your father, your Lord of all, then we listen to what Paul says. According to the riches of his glory, he gives strength with power through his spirit so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Our call to faithfulness is God pouring his faithfulness to us, through us, because it's according to him. It is according to what he says. It is not according to what we think. It is not according to what we think was going to happen or what was best. I thought I was going to be the National Youth Director of the AFLC. God said, no. I want you where you are in Onalaska. I want you to stay the fly convention coordinator because that's a very large role and I need you to be there. And I am going to pour myself through you to do those things. So that, Daniel, I may dwell in you. When we turn our gaze and when we turn our focus onto the faithfulness of God and take it off ourselves, Christ's indwelling spirit in our life becomes more alive when there's less of us, less of me in the way, more of what God wants to do, and as he pours his faithfulness to us, anxiety, stress, worry, trouble, doubt, they start to disappear. God does not call us. We are not called to those things. We are not called to worry. We are not called to stress. We are not called to think, overthink, process, analyze, judge. We are not called to do those things. We are called to God's faithfulness and God pours that to us. Romans 8, 10 says, but if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If you call yourself a believer, if you call yourself a follower of Jesus, he has called you to be faithful. He has called you to his faithfulness. And he says, listen, your body is now dead. You are dead. And it's me who is alive in you. And as Paul later said, I have been crucified in Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. For 20 years, I have preached the same lesson at youth group and almost the same sermon in church for 20 years. And I just... Say it in different ways because the message of Jesus Christ is very powerful. 
and it's very significant. And as we, I'm sorry if I offend you, as we as dumb sheep, can't we struggle and we stress out and we worry about things, something's not computing, something's not working. There is something broken in our minds. I believe a lot of the problem is our self. We have not been crucified with Christ. We're not dead. We have not died to self. It is not us who lives, but it is Jesus who lives in me. We bring nothing to the table except for filthy rags. In youth group, I'd say, turn to the person next to you and tell them that you bring nothing to, the, you bring nothing to church but filthy rags. But I'm not going to let you do that because it gets, it's chaotic. Oh, I see some people are doing it. Some people are like, I'll take the opportunity to tell them that they bring nothing but filthy rags. You are nothing. You are nothing apart from Jesus Christ. And if you think you're something apart from him, you've got it wrong. And we're going to pray for you because you're lost. It is only Jesus Christ. It is only him. And when God pours his faithfulness to us in the midst of my discouragement, in the midst of like, what the heck are you doing, Lord? What is going on? The Lord says, Daniel, it's not about you. It's not about what you think is best. It's not about what you wanted. It's not about all that stuff. It is about me and my faithfulness. And Daniel, do I have you? Do I have you? And you still mine? I think so, Lord. I think that you still have me. Well, then if I have you, then feed my sheep. If I have you, then be in me. Dwell in me. Be in me. Listen to the words that you've told many churches over the five, last five years. God has, I have called you to this ministry at Christ is Lord. Be there. Be faithful. What is it that God is calling you to? Who is it that God is calling you to? God says, wherever I'm calling you to be faithful there, be present there. Lastly, God's faithfulness knows what is best for us. So, Fly Convention, many of you know what the Fly Convention is. It's our biannual convention. Convention of all our youth gathering in the AFLC, uh, Bible College is part of the AFLC. Uh, and we go out there and it's one of the largest events that the AFLC does. A uh, lot of people, and we've been doing it for many decades, uh, been in Colorado since 1991, uh, was in BC, British Columbia the year before that in 89. And before that, we we're around the Midwest. And now we've been in Colorado for as many years as we have every other year biannually. And the ministry out at the Fly Convention has been, it, it's unmeasurable, and I'm not trying to pump up the Fly Convention. I'm just telling you what people have said. Many of you in our congregation have talked about how important the Fly Convention was to you and how many of you adults, not just students here, just adults, how much that week meant to you and the things that God taught to you during that week. So we know that Fly is, is a significant piece that God uses, not only in our congregation, but also in many congregations around this country. In 2019, the fall of 2019, right before COVID hit, I was at a conference in Orlando, Florida, and I heard this man and his mom and his dad speak from the stage. And I thought, as I listened to them, I thought, man, we've got to get them to fly. We have to. We must. And so later that fall, I made an inquiry and I said, hey, what would it take? We want to invite Christopher Yuan to be at our National Youth Convention in the summer of 2021. And they said, yeah, that sounds great. And we wrote up a contract. Everything was good. So he's scheduled to speak at 2021. Obviously, our convention got postponed. And he ended up speaking this last uh, year in 2023. Now, a lot of you who are at Fly Convention, you know who Christopher is. A lot of you don't know who Christopher is. Christopher is a, a Bible-believing man who's written a couple books. He just finished a video project series. Uh, he speaks in churches almost every weekend, uh, throughout the week in conferences. Uh, he was a gay man, a drug-dealing man. Uh, his book here on the screen, Out of a Far Country, the one that's on the left, 
That is his testimony of how God used many different circumstances to rescue him, to pull him out of a sin life into where he is now. And that uh, it's a great read. It's just a fan. He and his mom wrote that together because his mom and dad came to know Jesus also in the midst of that. And it was just crazy how the, the, the story is unbelievable. And the, the book goes back and forth. His mom's side, then Christopher's side, then Angela's side, then Christopher's side. And it, it's just unbelievable. Then he wrote a second book, Holy Sexuality in the Gospel, talking about biblical sexuality. What does that look like from a Bible perspective. And I love how he does a, and at the flag convention, he spoke on different things. And, and they said that Christopher and Angela said, we've never seen a response. His dad passed away a year ago. We've never seen a response from teenagers like we did at the flag convention. The te- usually it's all these adults who want to come talk. But they said the teenagers were the ones that came and wanted to talk and wanted to buy the books and, and learn more about these topics. And that just goes to prove how hot of a topic this is in our culture today. And I believe as a church, not just us as Christ is Lord, but as a church as a whole, we have not had enough conversations about these topics, these harder topics that aren't easy to discuss with people or children, but we need to. We need to be doing this. And it needs to start at a much younger age than you ever think it does. It it needs to be very young. And and Christopher is working on different things. In fact, the thing that he just released this last summer is the Holy Sexuality Project. It's a video series, how to help parents have conversations with their teens and preteens about sexual identity in, from a biblical perspective. So that's Christopher and, and, and the, what he did at the flag convention. And you've heard testimony even on this very stage of how Christopher made an impact in, in our flag convention in the lives of our students and adults. So that's where we, and I had a chance to meet him in my job as fly convention coordinator, the privilege of, of getting to sit down with a lot of great national speakers, have lunch with them, get to visit with them for that week, and then uh, that's it. So as I sat down with Christopher and Angela through the week for lunch, we, we had great conversations about life, uh, ministry. Uh, they showed great interest in my children, and, and, and Kelly just had a great time of connecting and it was just fantastic. Again, like I said, the response from the students at Fly was, was very positive. They left on Wednesday at the Fly Convention. The Fly Convention runs till Friday night. And so we, we stay there till Saturday, clean up, and then we head out. And my family, we spent a couple nights before we came back to Onalaska. Got home Monday night. So this is the Monday after the Fly Convention ends. The next day, we decided as a family that we'd grill some steak because that sounded really good. And so after it was done growing the steak, I got a phone call on my cell phone. It says, it says on my caller ID, Angela Yuan. And I thought, well, okay, this is interesting. Well, hello, Mrs. Yuan. And Mrs. Yuan said, well, you know, we just had such, she's a Chinese woman, so she, she spoke in a very strong, she speaks in a very strong accent. I'm not going to try to replicate it for you <laughs> this morning. But Mrs. Yuan said, listen, we just had a blessed week at Fly. It was so wonderful to see the response. God just moved things, and we really appreciated our time there. So that's fantastic to hear. And she said, you know, we also notice just the way that things are run at the Fly Convention. We notice that how people interact with us, how we were treated, how it was well run, and how everything just seemed to work flawlessly. And we really value, you know, obviously she says that we speak in a lot of different churches, so we see a lot of different things. And she said, I just really appreciate that and, and the work that you do. And I said, that's wonderful. Thank you, Mrs. Yuan. We, I was just wondering if you knew somebody in your circle of influences and, and things like that, if you just knew somebody that could do that for us. We, we need that. We've known we've needed that for a year. And I was just wondering if you knew of somebody. And she continued to talk a little more and more and more. And I, I stepped into the kitchen, I, I went like this on the phone, and my wife was like, she had no clue what I was, I was like, can you believe I'm talking? She had no idea I was talking to Mrs. Yuan. I was like, I don't know what's happening right now. And, and at the end, I said, Mrs. Yuan, are you asking me if I know someone, or are you asking me? And she said, well, I mean, if that's something you would have interest in, oh, well, maybe, yeah. That was on Tuesday night. After a phone call every night for the next from Wednesday night, Thursday night, long phone call on Friday with Angela and Christopher, 
I said this on Friday afternoon. I said, hey, listen, it's clear God's leading right now. And they agreed. And I said, can we take 48 hours? Can we just wait till Monday and just see what the Lord's leading is just to make sure? And he said, absolutely. And I said, there's a wedding tomorrow that I go to. And then there's church on Sunday where our students are sharing about the fly convention on Sunday. And they said, yep, that sounds great. We close our phone conversation that afternoon in prayer. And in the next couple of days, I didn't really pray about it. It didn't. Kelly and I talked about it here and there, but just did the things that were normal to us. Went through our routines, went to a wedding, came to church, had fly convention Sunday, sharing with you all. And the Monday morning, it was clear without any doubt, this was God's leading. God knew in November that that's what he was prepping me for. I didn't. And all of a sudden it made sense, like, okay, Lord, the frustration, the discouragement, the the heartache is gone. It it didn't matter because you were calling me to something greater than I could see. And Lord, you reminded me that I needed to be faithful, that you called me to be faithful. Lord, that you're the one that pours your faithfulness to me. And Lord, you're you're now reminding me that you know what's best. And your faithfulness is telling me that I need to trust you. In the midst of that week, and I, as, as I was talking to my garden friend, one of my garden friends, I said, hey, listen, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe this isn't right. Maybe it's just me going, ooh, you know, shiny new toy. This will be exciting. And he said, listen, do you believe that Christopher and Angela have been praying about this obviously for a year. That they've been trusting the Lord for guidance, following his leading, seeking him, humbling themselves before him, going, Lord, what is best? What is it that you want us to do? We know we need help, but where is it? And they were starting to be, they shared with me that they were starting to get very discouraged, that they couldn't find anybody. They were very downtrodden. They were like, we're about to give up because we can't find anybody to do this job for us. My friend said, do you believe that it is God who's been leading them? I said, yes. And my friend knows all that I've been through in the last 20 years. And he goes, do you, I also know that you live a life where you want to be faithful to God. That you want to be faithful to the congregation that God has called you to. And that you were, that as many times as you had to leave, as many times as you thought maybe it was the Lord's leading, you knew that God's call was there in Alaska. Do you believe that you and your wife have trusted in the Lord for his leading and you have placed your hope, your faith in that? And do you believe that God in his hand as he's been faithful to you in those prayers that he could be leading you to this now? I said, yes. He said, well, there's your answer. You see, in both those cases, it wasn't about what we're doing. It's about God. It's about God and his call, his faithfulness to us. And he says, I want you to be faithful to me. And when we are faithful to him, he'll do things that we could have never thought of, never predicted. I don't know where you are. I don't know what your circumstances are. I don't know the struggles that you might have. I don't know if you are wondering about God and his faithfulness. But I can tell you this, that God is faithful. And when you're able to remove yourself from yourself, you will be able to see the faithfulness of God. When you're able to set aside your desires, your wants, the things that you think, when you're able to set aside your anxiety, able to set aside your worry, your frustrations, your heartbrokenness, whatever it is, when you're able to just set that aside and go, actually, you don't set it aside, you cast it at Jesus' feet. Sometimes it's not even casting. Sometimes it's just, Lord, take it from me. Remove this from me because I can't do it. I can't cast it. When we throw ourselves at the mercy of Jesus, he says, I'm faithful. I'm faithful. And that's all you need to trust.
as we come to communion this morning, as we come before him and receive his holy body and his holy blood, Jesus is saying, I am giving myself to you because I am faithful. Will you receive me because I've called you to be faithful as well? Would you pray with me? Jesus, thank you for the opportunities that you give us to be faithful. I ask you, Lord, on my, please forgive me for the times that I'm not faithful. For the times that I've, I've started to waver and, and put my trust in something else other than you. And I ask you, Father, um, to fill me, strengthen me, pour yourself through me. And the, the power and strength that you provide so that you may dwell in me. Jesus, that's what you call us to. Faithfulness, just dwell, abide in you. So I pray that for myself. I pray that for everyone that's here this morning, those that are watching. God, that as you've called us to faithfulness, that we would be reminded to live faithfully by allowing you to live through us. Jesus, in your name we pray.